show um, where we're going to be talking about some hardware deals for this Black Friday season. And this is a special show tailored for those of you um, in the UK and Europe because uh, I think, uh, well, all of the deals that we're going to be looking at in today's show uh, are from the site Tommen, okay, which I think is it's just a great site for you guys to buy. I think some great deals there. Um, hello to the people in the chat. Nice to see you here. Um, it's just great that um, I'm able to sort of do this at a different time and connect with different groups of people. Um, I did one, well, when was this? Yesterday. I'm getting confused about the time. Uh, yesterday for me, I did one for those residing in the US and um, we were able to look at some things in sweet, at Sweetwater over, over there. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think Sweetwater deliver to um, the UK and Europe, so... There you go. Um, now, I, you, you're all at various different times over there. Um, it is 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 a.m. in the morning. I woke up, actually, because I'm not one of those kind of people that can just sort of jump out of bed and be um, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, as someone said earlier in the chat. Um, I, ha I need time. So I actually woke up at 3.30 in the morning to do this. The dedication, I know, the dedication. Um, and um, it's actually a good thing because I'm planning to go fishing, I think, at uh, 4 a.m. on Sunday. So I'm, hopefully I'm getting my, my body in the right cycle for that. Yes, I, I love to fish. Um, that's one of my pastimes. It's good to get away from the technology, actually get a bit philosophical here but it's it's good um to do different things apart from music production i feel anyway um things outside of actually just pressing buttons and what have you um now we are just a quick note on currency here when we look at the deals in today's show um we are going to be um talking in pounds pounds sterling now the reason for that is, and I, I know there's many, many people from different parts of Europe, but um, the reason for that is mainly because uh, in terms of my audience, the largest audience, as I was saying on my previous show, um, are from the US, and the second largest largest audience for in terms of viewing my channel are from the UK. So it's just going to capture most people. But the deals, the deals are still available in euros, so... Um, what what they'll work out to specifically, I don't know. But you can follow the links in the description. Oh, that's a good idea, isn't it? Hang on, while we while we're chatting away, um, I should actually um, uh, actually quickly update the description and put the links there. Oh, oh dear, I've made a mistake already. Um, so a quick hi to some people in the chat. Um, say we've got Doug in there. Let me just find Doug. Where are you? Um, Doug, nice, no, always nice to see. I think you were here, Doug, weren't you, for the USA show as well? Um, is that right? That's that's very, very, very keen of you. So I'm just copying and pasting from my notes here. Da, da, da. Give me a second, guys. I'm just going to update. Don't just talk amongst yourself while I update the, the the links in the description. Da da da. Done. Right. Okay. Done that. Sorry. <laughs> um, hi, Paul, from London. I spent a lot of time in London. Um, when I was younger. I used to enjoy going there when I was a young teenager. Um, I had an auntie who lived in Harrow um, and I used to go and stay with her a little bit and I used to love to go into central London and wander around a lot. Um, love the Natural History Museum. I would go there and of course in those days I was a bit of a fancy dresser so I used to love to go to Carnaby Street which is a, which was a very important place for me with my funky fashions and yeah it was great. I, I, I um, the, the reason I've got this funky accent and, and I'm here in Australia is because I was actually born in Australia although all of my family are English um, and uh, we moved or the family moved back to um, England when I was nine years old so um, lots of people do it the other way around I went that way around so I was sort of Australianized I was considered myself Australian and then went and went straight and lived on the Isle of Wight which is where my father had originally come from and spent most of my childhood growing up on the Isle of Wight moved and then escaped from the Isle of Wight and ran away with my band at the time when I was about probably 20 or so and um, ran away and, and, and lived um, on what Isle of Wight is called the mainland, so mainland UK. And um, 
travelled around with my band over there for a few years um, before, much later, coming back to Australia in uh, around about the late 90s. Okay. So that's why I've got this weird and funky accent. Who knows? Am I Australian or am I English? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's start talking about gear. It's Black Friday. It's time to buy stuff sensibly, I say. Don't just be buying stuff because it's cheap. Buy stuff that you couldn't normally afford and it's on a special deal and is going to be of great benefit to you. And I'm here to try to guide you in terms of you know what's going to be great benefit to you. Stuff that I've used um, or s there's some stuff actually in here that I haven't used, but I wanted to point you towards it because I think um, some of it's got such a great sort of reputation. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we'll be doing. Wait, well, give me one moment here. Great. OK, I'm ready to go. Technology, 5 a.m. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's bring up my uh, Tom and Page here. I'll switch that on. There we go. I'm just going to rearrange things here. My system here does some strange stuff. I feel like I should be on the left looking at the page. There we go. So the first thing I brought up here is Sonoworks. I noticed this was on sale for Black Friday. Um, this is their latest iteration of room correction. Um, and if you don't sort of know what this is and what benefit it would be, I, I think it's the kind of final piece in the jigsaw puzzle for your room um, sounding good for mixing, okay? And the easiest way to think of sonar works is, well, the easiest way to think, think of your room as an EQ, okay? It's an EQ which is boosting some frequencies and suppressing some other frequencies but it's unbeknown to you. You're used to hearing your room the way it is. So you don't really know that those frequencies are being changed in that way. So what happens is, is I, I, let's say, for example, my room has a boost at 1K, okay? Um, and I do my mix, and because there's a boost at 1K, uh, my vocals sound good. They're poking out nicely. They're nice and clear. Um, and that's all well and good. And then I take my mix and I and I send it to um, Doug in the live chat there. And Doug has a listen and he thinks, oh, Mike's kind of stuffed up there. I can't really hear the vocals. Um, they sound a bit quiet, you know. And, and so he sends me a message and says, Mike, the vocals are a bit quiet in that mix. And I say, Doug, you don't know what you're talking about. They sound fine. And that's because I don't know that the, the room has EQ. So, so what Sonoworks is doing is measuring your room. It's finding out which frequencies are, are um, not where they should be. And then it's applying an EQ curve. It's applying an EQ curve while you're listening to your music, while you're mixing it. Um, and that's the advantage of it, really. And it, it's sort of taking care of the things that you're not aware of in that way. Now, in order to do that, it's got to measure your room. So the software part of it um, has some, you know, test tones, which they, they play. Um, and it's got to be able to hear those test tones and know how they should sound at particular frequencies. So the other part of the equation is uh, having a microphone where it knows how that microphone um, should be hearing things at different positions in your room. So this package has that has a microphone with it. Now you could use other microphones with this. There are other reference microphones that you could use, um, but you probably don't have those lying around. <laughs> so um, this is you know these microphones are specifically designed for this purpose. I have tried to use it for other things. Um, I heard someone say, "Oh, they're great microphones for guitars and things like that." So I gave it a try, but. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, but, you know, um, it's going to be useful. It's not really... I thought when I first got it, oh, I'm not going to get a microphone. I'm going to use it once. It seems a bit of a waste. But not really. Um, as you do things like you get new monitors or you rearrange the furniture in your studio or things like that, you, you find yourself having to do this again. And the process itself is... Um, this is one of the things where Sonoworks do a great job because there's other companies that do this kind of thing. Um the, the process is wonderful. They've just really thought it out very, very, very well. So, um, so yeah, I think it's very, very cool. Um, so that's my first suggestion there. Now, it's normally £222, uh, but it's £149. That's a 33% saving. Um, it's not because I've got good math there. It actually says it, doesn't it? So um, in terms of, you know, what you're getting, as I say, you're getting the, the, the software to actually 
listen to actually kind of um, assess your room, which is really smooth. And then you get the software, which is applying the EQ curves. And you may have things like multiple monitors. So you can do this several times. You can apply um, several several um, uh, EQ curves. Um, just taking a comment here from... Uh, Michael, yeah, like a multi-band EQ on the master bus, absolutely what it is, yeah, applying a, a, a correct EQ. You know, I must say it's disconcerting when you first get this because it can be quite um, quite extreme, actually. This, the difference in the sound once you start to apply this to your master bus, um, it's like... Wow, was I that far out? <laughs> it makes you worried about all your old mixes, to be honest with you. Now, I will say about this, though, um, it's not a magic fix for everything because there's more to a room than just the, the the EQ influence. There's you know there's the reflections and things like that which can sort of mess with your mix in different ways. Um, so I don't think this is the first thing you should buy just because you've got, you know, really terrible monitors and a really and an untreated room this is not going to fix that for you don't do don't waste your money in that way um you need to have i'm going to say room treatment but i mean this in a very casual way room treatment could mean that you've just got a really well furnished room with some soft furnishing and some bookshelves and things like that you know so i'm i'm talking about you know making sure your room isn't completely bare um, and that you're in some way taking care of reflections and things. Uh, and you should have some decent monitors as well. So I would be room treatment monitors, and this is the final piece of the puzzle. But it shouldn't be the first piece of the puzzle at all. So if you're thinking that, then um, I wouldn't waste your money there. Um, so I think that's good for Sono. Oh, sorry, I just one more thing about it. Ah, this particular package also includes the headphone element of it. Now, I was a bit um, sort of thinking with this, with the headphones, oh, yeah, is that going to be useful? Because they, it, they can't listen to your headphones, okay? It has to be done with profiles that they've already got existing. To my surprise, when I tried this, the catalogue they have of profiles for headphones is enormous. Um, and I've got behind me somewhere, hanging on bits of the wall, you can see, a, well, you probably can't see, um, I've got something like 12 pairs of headphones hanging around this studio, um, and they had profiles for all of them, all of my headphones when I when I tried this out, so I thought, oh, that's, that was very cool. Um, so yeah, that's Sonar Works. Moving on from there. Moving on from there, what, what have I got up next? Well, let's go to, um, I sort of wanted to look at audio interfaces and things of that kind. And I always think that these types of things are great. By the way, if you were watching the USA show um, uh, earlier, then there may be a little bit of repetition here, not completely, but I will... For the, I, I imagine some of you were not watching the USA show and are not interested in it because it's not deals that apply to you. So I will be repeating myself just a little bit. Um, Doug may be one of those people. <laughs> um, so um, I will, will be repeating myself a little bit. Now, I w I'm going to be clear to say that I haven't actually tried this piece of hardware, but I think it's a good deal. Um, and it comes from a company that, who I trust. I've used and owned several Presonus interfaces, and the, the interface is at the core of this package here, really. Um, £159, reduced from 197 And if you're just starting out, it contains the core of what you really sort of need to um, sort of get going with your home studio experience. So... It has this interface, which is this Presonus one in here, the audio box one. Let's see if I can move the photos along to some closer looks at that. That's not a very useful picture, is it, Tommen? It's a picture of a volume control. <laughs> okay, let's go to the front. Okay, so you've got a couple of inputs here for your microphone, um, your, you know, uh, your line in if you want to use a quarter inch jack, things like that. So it's pretty straightforward sort of interfaces, these. Um, on the back, what's interesting with these because you've got, sorry, everything you need here, you know, 48 volts of phantom power, um, XLR, quarter inch jack, all that good stuff, headphones, and a volume control. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so the rear view here um, was just something I want to quickly 
point out to you, um, apart from the USB connection, the, the main outs. It's got MIDI connections on here. So I mentioned this in my earlier show. If you're starting out and you've got an old MIDI keyboard, um, this may be a convenience to you. And there's there's many, many audio interfaces um, at the moment don't have MIDI connections on them. I mean, there's, there's ways around it. You can get um, USB to MIDI converters, but uh, you know, if you don't want to do that and you've got an old MIDI keyboard and you want to hook up some MIDI, they do have the connections on this one, which is handy. Apart from that, um, we also get uh, a condenser microphone in there and probably a condenser microphone when you're just starting out is the most useful kind of microphone to have. Um, I mean, if you do happen to have something like, say, a lot of you may have, say, a Shure SM57 kicking around because you're a live performer and you've, you know, it's the sort of thing you'll have around. Um, then they can be used. Um, you can just get an audio interface. Um, but yeah, now there's lots and lots of debate about headphones and whether you should mix and, and on the headphones. Um, and there's an argument to say that some of the packages where you get some monitors. Um, with them, some studio monitors. But I'm talking about monitors, I'm not talking about screens, I'm talking about speakers. And there's an argument to say that, that that's something that you should have um, over headphones. I probably disagree in the sense of that, that um, cheap studio speakers uh, are probably worse than using headphones, to be honest with you. Um, you you kind of need a bit of a budget to spend on some half-decent monitors for your studio for them to be useful. Um, I, none of the really cheap ones I've heard are really worth using. I'd probably use rather use most headphones. So you do get some headphones with this to get you going. Um, and as I say, the condenser microphone there. So a great little package and a good deal. They've got um, almost 20% off there for that. So if you're just starting out, um, yeah, you'll be fine with this. This this will take you a long way. You can create um, great music with this. Um, and record vocals, acoustic guitar, that's nice kind of stuff. So that's a good sort of start. Now, along the same vein, um, and a little bit more expensive, in fact, but I wanted to mention it was this setup. So same again, um, headphones, um, you know, your audio interface and a microphone. I note that with the one previously, just going back here with this Presonus one, that it's got open back headphones with it, okay? Um, so they open back headphones can be nice for mixing. Sorry, I'm just trying to um, I'm go on the wrong screen here. Let's have a look at these headphones. They look very similar to some AKG headphones, don't they? Um, the open back headphones are going to be um, good for mixing, not necessarily great for tracking. I'm not saying you can't track with open back headphones, but when you're when I say tracking, I mean recording. So when you're recording with a microphone, um, it's probably better to have closed backs so on this Steinberg deal you are actually getting closed back headphones now the actual um, I mean Stein, Steinberg are they owned by Yamaha I'm not sure but they're you know a well well renowned company um, obviously they make Cubase as well um, and I have not actually used this interface again but a good buddy of mine Pete Johns over at um, Studio live today um uses this interface a lot um and it's got a kind of a high spec actually for for what it is um recording up to 192 kilohertz which you'll never have to record it i've I, i've i never use that ability on any of my audio interfaces but it can do it and go if you like um and really it's, it's a rock solid um it's clean um very useful if you want to hook up as well to some sort of mobile devices i there's many that can but i'm not sure which ones can but i know this one can so if you want to hook up to sort of an ipad or something like that this is what they call class compliant doesn't need drivers and things to operate um so yeah kind of good in that sort of way um but again with this package you get those headphones you get this audio interface and you get a, a condenser microphone as well um now, $199 is the price in North... Sorry, pounds. Got that wrong. Knew I was going to eventually. Um, £199 uh, reduced from £235. So uh, a pretty decent reduction there. If you're just getting started, it's a good way to go. Now, bear with me a second here. Actually, let me just have a quick um, drink of water. I'm drinking water. I, I had a cup of tea already. 
cup of tea. That's the Englishness in me showing. And it was, uh, it's over here, what's left of it. And we do have Tetley tea over here in Australia. And that's my preferred, that's my preferred cuppa. Hey, Stephen Foster, nice to see you here. An old friend of the channel, finally caught a creative source. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's normally a tricky time for some people in the UK. Oh, do you mean? Yes, so we're going to move on. We're going to another extreme, a complete different extreme in terms of audio interface next. Um, we've looked at this sort of um, entry-level stuff here, complete packages, great deals. And... Uh, the first thing I want to say about things like these ones that we've just looked at, sorry, just to reiterate myself, this this one here, the Presonus one, oh my goodness, control things, Mike, the Presonus one and the Steinberg one. People are going to think, well, yeah, they're cheap. Can you really record high quality music on them? Yes, you can record high quality music on these. I believe with these interfaces at this level, um, when you take time um, to learn your your trade, you can definitely uh record to a really high quality you know a professional releasable quality so why would you spend money um, on a much more expensive interface well that's what we're going to talk about now let's go over and pull up this page here this is a deal so the um, apollo twin x duo heritage edition okay Ooh bit of a mouthful isn't it um completely different price range reduce good reduction here um because you don't often get a lot of big dis discounts on universal audio stuff to be honest with you um they're not a company that is trying to compete on price that's not their thing um their thing is um to uh produce really good quality hardware and software so why would you ever go for this? Let's just bring it up to a bit of a different screen size. <clears throat> um, and and how am I qualified to talk about it? Well, I can't quite reach because it's plugged in, it's hooked up. But I have um, one up from this, the Apollo X4. And if you're cynical about this, the whole thing, then uh, I can share that cynicism. I was cynical about this until I had one. <laughs> then I was like, Okay, so could you produce as good a quality music on those cheaper audio interfaces? Arguably, yes, but the degree of effort you will have to put in to get there and the experience of doing it is different. There, there may also be a slight difference in the quality of things like microphone preamps. I, I do think that that's slight in terms of the way you perceive it because I, I think mostly when people listen to a song they listen to the song they don't listen to the preamps yeah um but the preamps and things on this are good but the experience of using it is exceptional routing all of that kind of stuff is very good people don't talk about this enough with a uh, universal audio stuff that the um the sort of mixer and the way you can reroute things is is really smooth and it makes sense and it works very powerfully but for me, the real advantage of these devices is in the fact that they have on board, they have this on board ability with plugins. There's a whole, excuse me, there's a whole range of plugins available from Universal Audio. We'll talk about those in a second. And when you're using them, they don't reside in your door as such when they're not being processed by your computer they're being processed on the device itself okay it's doing all the heavy lifting that means a couple of things actually it means that while you're tracking while you're singing say you're singing a vocal you can apply a compressor you can apply a preamp you can apply some reverb you can hear all of that in your headphones and kind of get the final sound of that vocal if you like while you're singing which may well most definitely can improve performance when, when people are monitoring and they're hearing a good representation of their voice especially that can improve their performance so that's the thing about it. and it's not putting any strain on your computer while it's doing that so that's great then when you're actually mixing although these plugins appear as a plugin in your door just like any other plugin in actual fact they're being processed on 
this piece of hardware okay so let's look at that experience that means as you're singing you get to hear those effects in your headphones and there's no latency issues to deal with because there is no latency with those effects and when you're mixing there's less latency because those things are being um, you know there's less glitch and latencies because those, those things are all being processed so that's why it's a much much nicer experience I know some of you are going yeah but Mike I can't afford it well, I know I know that so don't feel bad carry on using uh, more entry-level stuff or cheaper stuff because you know it's you're gonna be able to make great recordings but so the experience is different um, and in terms of what you get with it so this, this is why it's called the heritage edition with these heritage editions you get a whole bunch of uh, plugins with it these plugins are not cheap by individually either so that's something to keep in mind i'm just scrolling down here to see what information they've got they don't don't have much information uh, let me try and do this from memory some of the key plugins that you're after um so like uh, 1176 clone clones yeah well they're clones and um you know things like la2as and things like that i think there's a marshall um amp simulator in that, that you get you get a good bunch of those so actually some of the main plugins that you may want are uh, actually come with this anyway i think there's maybe about 10 of them um, and at the moment, I believe, and let me just find this. Here we are, this special offer. Then you get another $945. <laughs> We're suddenly talking in here? Yes, dollars of um, plugins with it, um, including the ones that you can see here. Now, I've recently bought this one here. Um, this is the Fender 55 Tweed Deluxe. Wonderful, wonderful plugin. Just a great amp sim. Love it. Um, if you want that kind of tone, it's great. So. Um, uh, Stephen uh, Foster has said it looks like the um, Antelope ZenQ. Yes, it does. Of which, as you also know, I own one as well. Very, very similar. They're in that range. Um, they and both of those uh, companies produce high quality stuff. And the the idea is similar, Stephen, with the um, with the with the way the whole thing works slightly different implementations um there's pros and cons between those two but um overall um although you will break your bank <laughs> to buy universal audio stuff um you you'll be satisfied with the results you get i have one thing i want to say is i know there's usb versions of of the apollo twin i haven't used that so i don't know what they're like um but that sort of ecosystem also gets more expensive you do have to have thunderbolt on your computer for these as well um thunderbolt uh, on pcs is i've the last two pcs i've, PCs I've had have had thunderbolt uh, there seems to be a sort of an old urban myth going around that um it's so terrible on pcs to use thunderbolts with universal audio stuff but my last two pcs worked fine just no issues to be honest with you um so it's just one of those things i think it's a little blown out proportion um but yeah consider that moving on from there i was hoping to find studio monitors for you guys i was hoping that in um, these deals that there would be some studio monitors that i could talk about but there wasn't <laughs> sadly sorry tom and if you're watching tom and um, i couldn't see anything inspired me there's not that there wasn't any there but the ones that are in there mm, mm. but i did find one thing and it's something i've had in my studio for a few months now i'm just going to quickly talk about it and this is um this it's a subwoofer the adam t10s um it's got they've got a not a nine percent reduction on it at the moment let's just bring that up there again i'll do the shuffle okay so um this was sent to me um to do a review a few months ago by the just the distributor of adam here in australia um federal audio are the distributors over here and and they represent adam here in australia they sent it to me and uh um this is not one of those situations where i just get sent it and i get to keep it by the way or anything like that it was sent to me and um just try it out and see if you like it and um, tell people what you think so I, I was sent to me and, and i thought you know what I don't know. I don't think I need a subwoofer because I've got um, eight-inch dry, uh, you know, main monitors. Some Adam ones here in the studio, and I'm not in a big studio, by the way. 
I don't know what the dimensions are exactly, but it's not a huge studio. So I'm probably pushing it a little bit already with the 8-inch ones. Anyway, and I was sceptical, not because I thought it was going to be bad in any way or anything like that. I didn't really know. I was sceptical. I just thought, this is not right. And I even said to them, look, I'm not sure that it's right for my studio to have a subwoofer. Um, but and they said, oh, we'll have a look anyway. They're clever. They're clever. Uh, so I got it and I tried it and I was like, oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know how I'm going to live without this now. Uh, it took me about an hour to come to this conclusion. Um, and definitely there are probably circumstances where um, you really probably shouldn't have a really, really tiny room. I probably wouldn't have a subwoofer. But um, what I sort of understood about it, I guess, is that it's not necessarily making um, the low end louder. Like I guess that's what people think of in home studios when they really, sorry, not home studios, home theatres, for example, when they have subwoofers, they really want to, you know, when they're watching that Hollywood movie, they really want to feel that bass. They kind of probably amp it up a bit and they want everything, everything to vibrate. That's not the way you're going to use it. What all this is doing is extending that range down lower, lower, lower so that you actually can hear it, Okay. So um, I will tell you, just as a little side note, um, I didn't end up being given this at all. I had to buy it, and I did buy it. And it wasn't in my budget, but I stretched my budget because I was so impressed with what it did. And now, again, it's one of those situations where I, when I bypass it, I think, wow, I was really missing information there. Now, you can counteract this, I think, with headphones that go down really, really low. That may be a good idea if you really want to hear low end. Um, because you do have to be careful with this. I they did It did come with a guide about how to set it up, and, and I followed that guide in terms of the position of where it is. I know that, sorry, just in case people are going to jump on me for this, I know that... Um, sub or, or bass I should say or low end is not is is not directional so it doesn't really matter where you point it but in terms of distance from walls and um and and its relationship to um, your other monitors so you're avoiding things like phase for example so you know if because if you think about it if it's a meter in difference away from your ears compared to the to to your main monitors then those frequencies are going to reach your ears at different times. So you could get phase issues. Yeah. So I hadn't really understood that before. Um, but yeah. So I, I won't press that anymore because I know it's a, of limited interest to people. But yeah, £325 as opposed to £359. Just a nice time to pick it up if you want one. Um, it's certainly. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very true. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, uh, washing machine is smaller than that. <laughs> um, so moving on from there, um, I do have a little comment here. Any keyboard piano recommendations for beginners? Hi, Breezy. Um, thanks for dropping in. I did look. It was I was very very determined to find some of those, and um, at the risk of people suddenly leaving the stream because I'm not going to have what they want, no, I did not manage to find any on Tom on Tommen at the moment. I'm sorry to tell you, um, but as always, um, I am kind of a big lover of. Um, um, be good if I could remember their name. Arturia stuff. Um, so if you're looking just for a small one to start off with, Breezy, um, check out the Arturia Keystep 37. I say that with authority because I have one and I still use it, especially when I'm doing sort of more mobile stuff. Hey, Chris, nice to see you here. Chris Salem. Hey, if you guys haven't checked out Chris uh, Salem's uh, channel, uh, mixed down online, do check it out. He's got, or if you're a Cubase user, he's especially good. But he, Look, I find with his tutorials uh, in Cubase that if even if you're using a different door, you can even convert the concepts over to a different door very, very well. I mean, I, I think it's always worth checking out other channels where if they're not using your door. Um, and uh, Chris is, I'm just going to tell you, Chris has become a friend of mine. He's a, such a good guy. Um, and he's hailing from Canada. So, sorry, we're going to be talking in, 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 in pounds here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah guys don't do it now after the show um definitely head over to chris's channel and um 
check out what he's got to say. You may see some videos there occasionally similar to mine because I've stolen his ideas. <laughs> oh, dear. I often say that to Chris. I won't steal that idea, Chris. So there we go. Yeah, um, that sub is great. Now, moving on, we're going to work through microphones here. Microphones. <sighs> this may be a surprise to some of you. I, th I like to try and find microphones which are well-priced to get going with. So we've got a few microphones to go through it in very different price ranges. So first of all, this one. When I saw the price of this, um, well, I was like, 20 pounds <laughs> that sounds cheap to me <laughs> sounds very good for so if you're just starting out and you need a condenser microphone um and you're really strapped for cash and i just want to say here i i never want to talk as if you know spending hundreds of dollars on something is just nothing i've spent much of my life dirt poor and if you're a musician you may understand this experience um so I know I talk sometimes about this high end stuff. I don't want to come off as elitist. If you can't, if you just don't have the money, maybe you're a student, maybe you're unemployed, maybe you've got a young family. Um, don't feel bad about that. You, you know, we we go through these times in our lives, and you need to buy things on a budget, and you know that they're not going to be as good as um, the more expensive stuff. But you want to make music, and you should. Um, and the reason I'm bring, bringing up this one particularly this Behringer C1 here, is because I have actually used it. I did have it uh, many years ago. I mean, it's been around for a long, long time, this microphone. Um, and it served its purpose as a condenser microphone. I will say, in honesty, and I don't know about the current version, I will say that um, it's, it's kind of not as quiet. It, there's a little, it can be a little bit of uh, noise with this one. Um, compared to some other microphones. it's I don't want to overestimate that. It's just there. It's just there a little bit. And later on when you buy more expensive stuff, you go, oh, that little bit of noise is gone. Yay. But, you know, honestly, in, in the thick of a mix, it would could be well, it could well be something you, you wouldn't even notice when there's a whole bunch of other things in there as well. So, um, so I definitely think if you're just getting going, you need a microphone, then this would be a... a, a a reasonable option but that's for me is if you really are strapped for cash and you're working with a budget and you must be very very strict if you don't have to be quite as strict or you've got a few extra pounds or euros to spare then i would go to this microphone this is the audio technica at 2020 i have um i mentioned this before in previous videos i did do a blind shootout with this microphone and two others the nt1a and the uh se electronics sex sex1 the sex one as i like to call it um and um i did a blind shoot earlier on the early on in the channel and this was the cheapest microphone of those three and in a blind shootout by people who watch the videos, um, they all picked this one as their favourite sounding microphone. I tried it. Um, you, we did exactly the same performance, male and female vocals. Um, and it's £77, okay? And I will say, just comparing the two, and they're a bit, bit of a different price, aren't they? £20 up to £77. Um, and this is not a Black Friday special, by the way. I just want, wanted to mention it. Um, there's a big difference in price, but there is a, a decent uh, jump up in quality there between those two microphones, I would say. So um, that would be another consideration if you haven't got the big bucks to spend at the moment. Um, what about the Shure MT7? Let me just remind myself of this one. Give me a moment, please. MT7. I'm, I'm just wondering if it... Sorry, I think I, you may. This is why I just looked this up because I was thinking, have I missed the MT7? You may be getting confused with the MV7, sir, um, which I did review on the channel um, some months ago, uh, probably even a year ago or so. Um, and yes, um, that would be one that I could recommend to you um, if you see that at a good price. I don't see any deals for that on. Oh, actually, was there a deal on Tom and for it? Oh, I may have missed it. Um, it may be in there. Have a look anyway. Uh, but yeah, the, the MV7 is something that I could um, recommend. 
Um, it is a hybrid microphone. I don't normally like to recommend those. It's kind of a USB and an XLR, but it is USB and um, XLR microphone. Um, and it's got some great features on the USB side. I just don't find that USB microphones are that they're great for podcasting, really, really good. I just don't think they're a very good solution for m making music because um, they don't normally have great features for monitoring what's already been recorded. Um, yeah, so, but I won't go on about that, but yeah, definitely worth checking that one out if you can find a special. Moving on from there, um, I did want to quickly mention as well, just while I'm talking about microphones. Sorry, I just, I just want to correct myself here. This um, AT2020, I, I said it's not in um, the the uh, Black Friday specials. That's not quite true. It is in there. It's just that the price is not reduced. And I did want to mention this because you'll see um, at the top here that you get um, this free of charge with this product, two products, uh, Nectar Elements and um, RX8 Elements. It's worth mentioning here that um, these two pieces of software are wonderful for a start. I mean, Nectar can be really, really good um, on vocals um, and it can just really kickstart you in terms of a, um, oh, what do we say, a vocal processing chain, if you like. Um, and RX8 is just awesome for fixing up awful things in your recording so mistakes that have been made with your recording pops and clicks and things like that it's very very good at that it's like magic in some ways so both of these products are just sort of you know are definitely out there um for sale and some of them i i, I do believe i should have prepared this but the combination of the two would definitely be worth more than the value of this microphone for example so that is a deal which, that's something that's happening with a lot of microphones at the moment on Tommen. these two pieces of software going with it so that's why it's a good time to buy this at the moment from Tom and they really are worth it those two pieces of software if you don't already have them and that takes me on to this next one this is again a microphone which is a little bit more expensive again um, and again has that same deal so it has the that nectar elements has rx8 elements with it as well but no actual reduction in terms of pounds on this why do i keep saying pounds in that accent i don't know um rode nt1a why would i recommend this it's always it's been around for years in this format with this package you know with the shock mount with the pop filter um it comes in not a metal case, but kind of a, a hardened plastic case and all that sort of stuff. It's like a complete setup. Um, and this is a microphone which I used on many, many recordings um, and still use it sometimes now, even though I've got a much larger collection of microphones than I used to have. But um, it stood the test of time. It's a, just a good microphone. Now, I will say when I compare it to the previous one here, the Audio Technica here, um, that... Um, it's a bit sort of um, accentuated in the high end and some people, some people find it can be a little bit harsh. So if you tend to have a lot of sibilance in your voice, this might not be the best pick for you. You may be better off with the AT2020, but, 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 but look at the difference in the two packages. This is just a microphone. This is a microphone plus your pop filter plus your shock mount and all that. So by the time you add a pop filter and a shock mount to the Audio Technica one, you may be starting to get kind of close to the road one. But, you know, I personally, despite the results of um, the blind tests that we did, I still prefer the road. That's just me majority of people who did the blind tests on, on my video uh, preferred the Audio Technica. Microphones are like that. You can't just say there's just one that's better than the other. There's There are opinions involved and there are different voices and things that you record. So, yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm going to do my old trick again now. Excuse me. Oh, you like the sound of that, do you? It's like a little kiss on the end there. You can tell it's early in the morning for me. It's still 5.44 in the morning for me here. <laughs> I'm going to do my old trick of jumping up to a completely different price range here. 
Um, this is a microphone which I spoke about on my earlier stream. So again, I'm going to uh, repeat myself again here. The AKG C214. So let's talk about this microphone quickly. It's a microphone which is based upon, and I'm going to use my language quick, carefully here, based upon um, the very well-known C414, okay? which is a much more expensive microphone from AKG, which has definitely been used on some of the, you know, the greatest recordings of all time. It's a, it's a proper, proper professional studio microphone, the C414. Now, excuse me. The C414 is is got two capsules in it. It's got lots of different polar patterns. It can record from different directions. So it's got lots of features on it as well as being really high quality. Um, so that's one of the things that makes it a great microphone. So what they sort of say they've done here is got rid of all those different polar patterns. Gone with a microphone that has just one polar pattern, a cardioid pattern, which is arguably the most used um, pattern um, for, for in the studio for microphones. So that's good. And then they've just taken one side of, you know, the, the capsule from a 414 and that's what they've got. So this is sort of a standard microphone in that way. Um, it's got a cardioid pattern. It's going to pick up from one side. Um, I, I will always go on about this microphone, though. It was sent to me to try out, another one that was sent to me to try out. Um, and I had the option of buying it, and I didn't at the time. I just sent it back after the review. And I always regretted it. I've, I've rarely regretted that, but I always regret this because... Um, of all the microphones that I've re I've reviewed on the channel so far, this is my favourite. That's just it. Just is it. Just is my favourite microphone. It just compared to other microphones we've been looking at here. Let's go back to this one. Okay, it's pretty much what double the price there, but you hear the difference. You definitely hear the difference on it right away. It's not one of those things, and you go, "Hey, I've spent all this extra money, and I'm not sure if I can hear the difference." So. So that's why I've got that one in there. Um, it does come, just um, so you know, it does come with, let me just pull up the other pictures here, just so I can double check. I believe it comes comes in this hard case and it comes with a pop filter. Sorry, not, well, sort of a pop filter, they call it a windshield, so a foam one, that's sick, which works fine. And it's got a shock mount with it as well. So um, that is definitely worth considering if you're in that if you've had some of these other microphones and you're thinking you know what I'd like to step up I'd just like to step up my game with microphones a bit then this is going to be the way you would go and of course at the moment you get those two pieces of software with it which I mentioned earlier Nectar Elements and RX8 okay cool now the last of the microphones that I'm going to talk about is is this going to be the most expensive one I can't remember now is this one this is the most expensive one. It's the very microphone that I'm talking through at the moment. Da, 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 da. This microphone can sound very, very warm, and it can sound like this. There's a big difference, isn't there? Why have I got an SM7B? I've probably had it for a year now or so. It's a very hyped microphone, not in terms of sound, but it's hyped on, on, on the internet for the last couple of years. It's been around for donkey's years in, in one form or another. Um, but podcasters got hold of it and YouTube has got hold of it um, two or three years back, I guess, and it became trendy and popular. That's not why I've got it, although I did want to make sure for you guys that I've got sort of good sound in my videos and things like that for the voiceover parts. Um, but, it, you know, it was designed as a vocal microphone and it's a great mo vocal microphone. Especially when um, the room is an issue. This is a dynamic microphone, by the way. It's not a condenser microphone. Um, so when the room is an issue and you haven't got great treatment, this is a great microphone. Um, I'm not going to go on and on about it because there's not much to say about it other than it works solidly. Um, people will be telling you in forums, oh, it's got the same capsule as an SM58. And they're right. They're correct. Uh, but there's much more to a microphone than just the capsule. And anyone who's got the two microphones, which I do, and I've got an SM57 as well, will tell, will tell you right. Well, there's a difference in sound for sure. It's not it's not a matter of opinion, in my opinion. <laughs> it's a massive difference in sound. So, of course, you know, um, anyway, um, it's a great microphone. Do you need a cloud lifter with this? Possibly, but don't assume that you do. Um, there's 
So what a cloud lifter is basically something which boosts the signal of the mic, a preamp if you like, which cleanly boosts the signal um, of the microphone before you put it into your interface. Because an issue with all dynamic microphones, not just this one, can be that you need to turn the gain up on your interface a lot um, in order to, to get it sort of going. Um, but I think this is overstated a little bit. I think there's an awful lot of interviews uh, interfaces where Yes, you may have it turned up to eight or nine, as long as you're still getting clean uh, sound from your preamps when it's turned up that high, then I don't think that you ne de necessarily need a cloud lifter. And cloud lifters are not cheap. I can't remember the price of them offhand, but they're not cheap. And when you combine it with this microphone, it can get pretty expensive. So buy the microphone first, give it a try with your, it'll be usable right away it's not like it's you're not going to hear anything um but you may find after a while uh, maybe i need a cloud lifter but don't buy it with it to start with it's my advice which is what i did and i thought most of the time i don't need it to be honest with you so there you go learn from my mistakes okay moving on we've got some quirky stuff coming up now um some of which i have not actually um tried personally but i think it's worth having a look at so this is a quirky one. People have asked me a lot about this on the channel. And this is this. Oh, no, not this. Oh, sorry, I've got confused with something else. Let's do this the other way. This is what they've asked me a lot about. They're, people are always saying to me, Mike, what arm do you use? What arm do you use for your microphone? So this this thing here. It looks. By the way, this looks huge, doesn't it, on camera? This is because I'm using a webcam and the perspective. Look how big my fingers are here. It's just a foot in front of my face, but they look like they're a, a meter in front of my face. So my my webcam is making things screen. So the microphone, look at this microphone, look at the perspective, it's huge. And the arm looks huge as well. It is chunky, which is why I've got it, and it's solid. But it's not quite as big as my webcam's making it out to be. Now, the actual one I've got is not the same as, as the one that we're looking at here. Let me just kind of zoom in on this hello internet wake up thank you um but i have to say i've seen a few around and it looks to me like the sort of product which is probably made in china and gets rebadged by a lot of people because they all look exactly the same the knobs everything on them i can look at this and if it didn't have that branding on there i would say this is exactly the same as my one um so uh i believe it is the same one to be honest with you um, if it isn't, well, it's very, very similar. Internet's very slow, isn't it? Well, it took, took some time there. Um, if you've got a more expensive microphone and you want to make sure that you've got something that's going to hold it and it's not going to move around, then these things are definitely um, worth getting. I think for £48, um, it's, it's it's definitely worth getting if you, if you want. It. Now, you may um, be... Um, not a YouTuber like me or a podcast or anything like that and just a musician who's making music and you may wonder what use this would be to you. I think it's actually very, very useful to you, to be honest with you, because I've found since I've been using this and since I've been a YouTuber and had a need to use this, because it sits there with a microphone on it all the time, it makes me much more inclined to quickly record ideas I've had. So I'm lurking around the street, I've quickly got, oh, oh that's a good guitar part i want to record it and quickly do a, you know a quick demo with that and a vocal it's just very very convenient to have that with there while where i'm sitting etc etc otherwise i've got to get a microphone stand out set it up blah 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 those sort of things are a bit of a barrier to recording when you have to set things up it's like i say with my guitars i don't keep i've got hard cases for all of my guitars and i don't put them in there unless i'm going somewhere all of my guitars are out they're on stands they're on the wall they're ever because you play guitar more when they're around you and easily accessible in my opinion and it's important to play your guitars often. <laughs> yeah, practice is never something you don't need to do. Um, so, yeah, great fittings on these. Um, compared to the other ones that you see, which have those sort of springs and I don't know what they're called. I don't know the technical terms for these things. Um, they're much more sturdy and less noisy. When you move those around, they're clang, 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 and the springs vibrating, clang. And then also the other thing that I like about these, because I'm a little bit OCD, a little bit OCD, have you seen how tidy my studio is all the time? Um, the, the cable you can see here um, is 
he starts off there. It's conveniently got a length there to plug into different places, but actually is routed down through the stand, comes out the other end. And they give you a cape. That, that cable's internal to it, comes with it. So, yeah, they're great. Um, I had a look around on the site. Uh, to There are black ones. And what they've done here is the silver one, which is probably the most unpopular color, is, is the one that's on special. Um, if you want a black one, you'll have to pay the regular price for them. I think it's a good price for those. It's it's some something similar to what I paid um, in Australian dollars. Yeah. So the next thing up here is this one. I was looking over. I, this one jumped out at me. Obviously, this is not my studio desk. Um, but oh, right, hang on. I'm just getting a little comment here which I want to bring up. Ooh. I'm a firm believer if you can't see it, you don't use it. I have a Rode PSA and so easy to drag over to record your kit. Absolutely, Stephen. I've, I've thought about the, the Rode PSA as well, and they've got a newer version of it as well, which looks really, really good. Um, and I, I reckon that's a good one too. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. They need to be out and ready to use, otherwise you won't use them. Anyway, this one jumped out at me. A little desk here. Um... Now, if you're if you're set up with some sort of table, kitchen table or something like that, absolutely fine. That's cool. But there's something about having a sort of a dedicated um, piece of furniture um, to to record with, which can be really really cool. Um, and what makes this one a studio desk? And by the way, the price is extraordinarily good. Um, let's just have a look. What makes this really, really good is it's there for the task. It's got um, some areas there. You can sort of see them on the top. It's got two areas for rack mount gear. It's got a couple of places to hang things like headphones. Um, and it's got a place down below for to put something like a keyboard on. I mean, it's just a neat little setup, especially if you're kind of a little bit restricted for space, I guess. 122 pounds. Um, let's put it in context. As you guys know, I built my own desk. And here's my dirty little secret with my own desk that you see. Um, I bought it with wood from the local DIY store and hinges and screws and glue. And it took me three months to build it, all in all, in between doing other things, of course. But it actually cost me... <laughs> Uh, Australian dollars. It cost me about about two and a half thousand Australian dollars to build it, um, which is probably in pounds. I think you know over a thousand pounds, something like that. So time and money is what it costs for me. Um, now, of course, it, I built it custom to exactly what I want for my room, for my body, even um, everything like that. You can these things are expensive; they're not cheap. Um, the studio desk so uh, for 122 pounds it may not be absolutely ideal but i think it's um i think it's great to be honest with you if you just want a little dedicated um thing now what i would say with this is what i would pair it with and i haven't got any specials for you on this but what i would pair it with is some monitors on stands um it looks to me from looking at this if you tried to put your monitors on top of it so you had a when i talk monitors i'm talking about speakers by the way but if you had your monitor as your screen in the middle there and then you had uh, speakers either side it looks to me like they'd be positioned way too high because these racks that they've got for for rack mounted gear are quite tall here so yeah i would probably go down the route of having them on stand. I, I prefer speakers um, on stands anyway. Um, I, you don't get, they basically don't vibrate down through your furniture. So um, it's, it's better to have them on stands. Um, so you can, like, you can get isolation pads, I know. I'm a little bit skeptical about those. Um, but yeah, so this combined with some speaker monitors, sorry, with some speaker stands, what am I talking about? Um, then I think you'd have an almost ideal setup. So good stuff there, worth looking at. And I know that Nick Ellis, g'day Nick, is tempted. I think I've seen a photo of your desk at some point, Nick. Yes, yes, I, I'm pretty sure I have. And yes, I think you should buy this desk. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 
but I haven't actually tried it. So if it falls apart on you, it's not my, it's not my fault. Sorry, I've tried to be clear here. Oh, dear me. 20% off. I'm sure it's well worth it. Okay, moving off from there to something else I haven't used. <laughs> this is not good, is it? But something I'm going to recommend anyway. Um, This is a uh, an art pro. So um, a mic preamp here. Um, art or ART, um, as uh, they may or may not be called. Um, I think, are they a Canadian company? Could be. Not quite sure. Can't remember now. Um, but anyway, they are just renowned for making um, outboard gear for your studio at a price which doesn't break the bank. You know, we're always being told by um, audio elites how much better hardware is. And then we go and look up the price of hardware. And uh, and then you go, oh, OK, <laughs> it really is for the elite. Um, especially when you look up sort of things like LA2As and things like that. You've, probably, you've, got, you've got the plug in. You think, oh, maybe I should get the hardware. And then you go, no, I won't get the hardware. Um, so AIT stuff is not like that, but it's, it's very reasonably priced. But you will see it in pro studios. Um, if you look at some of my videos, I can't point. Can I turn it around? I don't think I can turn. The, let me try this. Oh, God, this is a mess up, isn't it? Somewhere over there. I can't really point my. I've got an ART um, voice channel, which is, a, I haven't done a review on it yet. I've had it for many, many months, um, and it's awesome. I'm so impressed with it. The quality of their gear is very, very good. Um, and so that's why I'm looking at this, because if you want to sort of step up from the preamps that are in your audio interface, this could well be a good way to go. Now, I'm going to encourage you to look at other reviews before you make this purchase because I haven't actually used this. But as I was scrolling through, it just jumped out at me. First of all, there's a big price reduction here, down from £425 down to £315. Um, and I did look at a couple of quick reviews, and they were very, very good. I'm recommending it on the basis of brand, okay, that everything I've tried from these guys so far has not disappointed, even though the price is reasonable. So if you're looking, thinking you may get a mic preamp, then I think this one is definitely at least worth checking out. Now, moving on to something completely different for my final pick from Tom. And by the way, I forgot to say, if you are in the chat right now, the live chat, somebody was trying to remind me earlier, Doug, could you hit the like button for me right away? Do it right away, and that will make sure that other people come and watch the replay, which would be nice. Um, they'll get to see these great deals as well. The links are all in, already in the description down below. Please follow them. This is not. This has not been sponsored by Tom and Tom and don't know that I'm making this uh, video at all. Um, but the links are obviously affiliate links, so I will get a small commission, but it won't affect how much you pay at all. So there's nothing added um, in terms of what you pay if you follow that link. And um, if you do that, um, thank you in advance for that. It's a great help to the channel. And also thank you for liking, as Reg already has. What a great spelling of Reg that is. I like that. So moving on to the final thing, it's something I do have in my studio, which I've never reviewed, but you may have noticed it here and there. And I want to talk about it because we can do a little educational piece on it while looking at it. This is on special at the moment, and that is the Vox AC-10C1 Custom. Oh, um, this is something I probably got about a year or so ago now, I'm guessing. I went to my local music store. I was trying out a lot of amps in this vein, um, and, you know, that, that included mostly uh, Fender amps of a similar price, and a similar size and this is the one I went with now that's going to be a personal taste thing I was I took my guitars with me so I was using my Gretsch and I was using my Strat and they both worked in my opinion really really well um, with this amp for the sound I wanted and that sound is really quite a classic va uh, Vox sound it's hard to describe um, just much like Fenders I guess there's people describe it as having a bit of a chime but what I wanted was there's many, many amps around that you can get at the moment. 
um, with, and, you know, some of them will include simulations of some kind in them, you know, of, of different things, which are probably very useful. But I didn't want that. I wanted a basic, straightforward amp, which was a tube amp. So I wanted that natural sound that you get with some nice, warm tubes. Um, and I wanted to mic it up and get that authentic sound, which I do and I enjoy and I love. Now, the problem... The, the, I think the mentality, if you're thinking about buying a guitar amp for the studio, your mentality's got to be a little bit different. Because if you've been buying it for um, live performance, one of the things you've probably been thinking about is being loud enough to be heard by the audience and to get that kind of sound um, that you want. The only issue is, and it's just, I'll interrupt myself here, it's wonderful to see my good friend and fellow YouTuber, Dan from Lonely Rocker here, I think many of you in the live chat will be familiar. If you're not, you need to check out his channel. And I'm not surprised he's chimed in with a comment on tubes <laughs> because he is a lover of tubes. Uh, me and Dan have discussed this a bit. Um, and I have to say, I, did, I remember having a conversation with Dan about this, actually, that I was always a bit sceptical about people who sort of went, oh, you know, they can't emulate tubes with guitar sims and all that. Uh and then after I sort of got this amp, then I went, yeah, absolutely, 100% agree. It's just one of those things. Um, I know it's just one of those things that once, once, you've, once you've heard it, you hear it and you go, yeah, that's definitely true. It's, but having said that, I'm not, you know, these things are budget orientated. Not everyone has the ability to go out and buy these things. Um, and um, can amp sims... Let's put it this way. They can change the sound so that you've got a different sound and it might be a sound that you like. Let's put it that way. Are they accurate to actual tubes? Not quite really when you compare them, to be honest with you. But they can still change the sound of your guitar. I mean, especially if you're just plugging straight into your interface. You've got to use some sort of simulator of... of and if you if tubes are the like you know are the sound you like then go for the amps in. but anyway um so let me talk again about the, the mentality of this so when you buy amps for a live situation um you're going to buy something which is going to be able to project often out especially if you're playing you know in local sort of clubs and things um but in the studio for most of us who live in normal houses Something like, and Paul, Paul's in here in the chat, good day, Paul, talking about his AC30. And you've said exactly, it's very loud, very, very loud. Um, they, the, now, the issue you're going to have is in order to get the sound you want from some of those amps, you do have to get the gain up pretty reasonably loud. And there's two, you know, circuits in these, there's, in terms of there's two different utilizations of the tube, two different stages. And you kind of probably to get the sound that most of us are looking for, going to have to get both of those stages up a fair amount. At which case, at which point, as soon as you do that, you've got complaints from the neighbors, you've woken your children up, your partner now hates you, because especially because you've played that guitar part 25 times in a row. Um, so yeah you know that's that's the issue so really um and my thing is is that so for the studio what you want to be looking for is a less loud amp which you can then drive and get some tone from if that makes sense does that make sense dan have i said it in a good way perhaps dan could explain it in the chat in a better way so it's actually very very handy for the studio to have an amp which is um not quite as loud which is a little sort of would be uh, maybe a bit underpowered for a live um, situation then you can drive it hard and you can get some nice tones out of it because um you you tubes need to be driven to get that tone yeah they need they need to be sort of happening so um on the other hand <laughs> although i'm recommending this ac10 for um for this uh, app for these applications i will say this is still quite a loud amp it's not quite a, it's not a practice amp it's not like that it, it's 
the size of it physically is nice and that's another consideration as well for studios because by the time you pack them out with gear um but um it's not too it's not too small it's not too big um it's it's but i find that i can just drive it enough to get the tone that i like without it being crazy crazy loud okay but honestly what I find is is that I still, for a lot of recordings, if I'm trying to be kind to my neighbours, have the gain on about, uh, the gain knob goes up to about mm, maybe 35, 40%. So that I'm driving that first stage reasonably hard, but I have to have the volume down to like <laughs> two. <laughs> if I had it on five or six, you know, it would be pretty loud. Um, I think you could use this to gig, if you're playing small venues as well, um, you know, small pubs and clubs, um, I think you could gig with this. And let's face it, if you're playing big venues, um, you know, you, you're going to be, the, the amp's going to be mic'd up and going through the PA as well. So, you know, uh, now in terms of features, it hasn't got much. You plug into it and off you go. Um, let's just look at some of the pictures here. Uh, let's find a better picture than this. You've got a, a, a gain a knob, which I was talking about there. You've got bass, treble, reverb, and volume. Now, I just want to say with the reverb that it is a digital reverb on these, um, but it's, it sounds good. It sounds nice. It sounds analog to me. Um, so uh, it's always nice to have that on an amp, I find. I think somewhere it's got an external speaker out. But you don't get much more basic than this, okay? Has it got an external speaker out? Yes, on the back there, okay? It's really just a very straightforward thing. I love the sound of it. I will mention, though, that the other thing about that you may consider if you're, you know, sort of thinking about getting more authentic sound, these are not, like, clean. When you switch them on, even at vo low volumes, there's a little bit of a... going on there probably a little bit lower than that okay so when you get a microphone in front of that that microphone quite happily um, picks that up so it's a different thing you're not I mean you probably don't really care at a certain stage in your mix but yeah that's the only thing I'll say about it that yeah now there are there were Fender amps as I say that I tried out at the same time um, I don't remember model numbers offhand I, 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 I love Fender amps um, in general um, but yeah this was just the sound that I was looking for a good old British sound um, and that was what I wanted and that's what that's what I get I really enjoy it so that is my final piece of gear for this and it took me an hour to get through all of those I hope it's been a little bit of an education along the way that was one thing I hoped for in discussing gear on these shows um, it's not just what should you buy and this is a great deal but um, you know what you should you be considering when you're buying gear um because you can um get burnt at this time of year just by price and you end up buying something and then you realize three or four months after you bought it it wasn't that cheap because i haven't used it since i bought it so it was actually a complete waste of money buy things that are going to be useful to you um if the things that are going to be useful to you are not available at the moment in these Black Friday sales, then wait for the next ones or save up a bit longer or, or what have you. Don't I, I, I should probably shouldn't be saying this because if I just encourage you to buy everything, I'll earn more money in affiliate sales. But I'm not into that. I, I, I think still buy cautiously, even though there's some great deals out there. Um, it's more important to buy things that are going to get things done right for you. Um, and I personally think that it's always if you can afford it get that little bit of extra quality um and that doesn't mean it has to be more expensive there are plenty of things out there so um it's been great that you've been here with me i appreciate it so much if you're watching on the replay um then let me know uh, your thoughts on some of these pieces of gear it's been lovely to have you you folks here um with me during this live uh, broadcast i'll be i'll be if you haven't checked it out by the way let me just quickly tell you about this um then do uh, check out this video which i've paused on the screen here i released this 
two days ago. Um, and this was about the, the deals I think are really great um, on Plugin Boutique at the moment. It's another great place to buy things. Um, and again, this was on the theme of things that I actually use, plugins that I've used for a while that continue to be good. You know, not just flash in the pan plugins that just looked nice at the time. So check out that video as well. And I've got my regular um, featured artist live show with my guests, Pete Johns and Jade Starr. Um, that will be tomorrow. Like think tomorrow, a couple of hours from now maybe four hours from now. I know for you guys, it's going to be like the middle of the night. Sorry about that. But um, you can catch the replay. And that will be going out as usual this week. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being supporters of Creative Source. Love you guys to bits. And I will see you